What's up guys, Brett Maverick here. It's uh, 9.30 a.m. Just got back from the doctor. Haven't had a dab since about 4 a.m. So nice and steady sober. One thing that I did do though, I keep forgetting. I brought the Omicron with me and I actually loaded it up crazy this morning. I put, oh, oh god, there's at least a half gram in there. I guess those things hold over than that. I found out if you tilt it to the side when you're uh, like no oil will run in it'll be like boiling inside the funnel it's like it's full but then if you just tilt it to the side it all runs down it's weird um, I go in here on less or second last dab of some uh, purple arrow shatter I'm gonna be making some shatter tomorrow morning I got an idea on something I'm gonna try I'll talk about here in a sec Now, instead of acting like I already knew this, you know, and going on like this is something that I've known all along, I'm just going to go ahead and let you guys know something that I, an idea I think, um, you know, I'm sure other Shatter peoples know this, or maybe they don't know this, and uh, it's something they do, or maybe it's just, it's just something I've been thinking and maybe it's a fluke, but uh, <coughs> I noticed when I was purging off that, doing that, um, Winterized run, the uh, alcohol I boiled away in a small Pyrex like this that fits into my um, vacuum chamber. I used to, uh, when I first got the vacuum chamber, the first thing I wanted to do was use one of these small Pyrexes and put it in there to purge, but I just, it would not um, keep the oil steadily warm. Like, it'd be like a matter of, you know, five, maybe even eight degrees from one end of the Pyrex to the other of my oil. And that's something that wasn't, I try to keep a steady temperature throughout the whole thing when I'm making honeycomb. <coughs> so I figured parchment paper is the best thing. It's the thinnest thing to get it right down on the bottom of that chamber. Now that's making honeycomb. So I was having trouble doing that and went, you know, fuck it. That was it, I wasn't doing it anymore. Um, until I was boiling, making that winterized oil, and I put the Pyrex like this, I had boiled it down to um, just an oil consistency, and it was kind of sappy. I figured if I back it, it would get a little um, thicker, so I put it in the chamber uh, with this, and I noticed only where I had touched my dabber to it. Like, I touched my dabber to it to check the consistency. I guess you could say it was agitated. I didn't whip by any means. I just stuck the dabber in there, you know, to scoop of a dab. I noticed that once it was getting to a full vacuum, that part started to do a muffin. Only where I had moved it in the other part where it was clear, it didn't bulge up and muffin up. It just would slowly bubble and was bubbling in the bubbles would pop. The main thing is it didn't muffin up. Now, um, the smaller runs that I do when I put them in my chamber and it, it gets scrape it out of the Pyrex and put it on the uh, parchment, throw it in my chamber, turn on the vacuum pump, it'll do the muffin thing. Um, but if I can get it to where I don't have to turn the vac pump off and deflate it, what I'm saying is the size runs I do when I throw it in there and I turn on the vac, that muffin is going to get all over the walls if I don't kill the pump. Um, so I have to, before it even gets to a full vacuum, I have to let it down and do it and do that until this muffin stops wanting to expand and get on my walls. Smaller runs, like say I put like five grams oil in that chamber, I could turn that on, let it go from zero to a full vacuum, have that muffin expand and then go back flat because it doesn't touch anything. And I notice that stuff tends to not cloud up as quick or whatever. What I'm getting to is I think the constant expanding and contracting of the muffin is must be creating some kind of agitation. And, uh, <coughs> and that's what gets it to start waxing up, but I think all of us know what makes it wax up in general, and that's from purging really far, whether or not you, whether it expanded into a muffin and went down that once, or if you did it 200 times in a little tiny ass, eight ounce jar and you're trying to purge, you know, quarter ounce of oil and you're just root, 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 over and over and over, um, either way, it's still going to have to purge a crazy amount of time to get all that to wax up. It's not just going to wax up because dude did the muffin shit. So what I'm going to, um, uh, also the muffin, sorry, I guess let's jump back. The muffin in the video, in my how-to video, threw off so many people because they thought that was a step in the process. They thought that like they had to get the muffin, and that was not it. That all I was doing there was just trying to get the um, oil to stop or stop having action uh, with uh, no heat before I 
start adding heat. Um, some people like to start the chamber at 120 immediately. For me, if I'm getting it to bubble with no heat, I don't need it. I mean, I only need heat when I, I only add heat when it's needed. What I was gonna say is I'm thinking if nothing's transferred, I'm not talking blasting on parchment or blasting on a slit, oil slick pad, because those can, you move those. So the oil still gets to get pushed around and everything. And when people do it blasting the parchment, I still see them folding it in half and carrying it back to get it balled up in the center anyways. So it must be that they're just so lazy they don't want to scrape rather than they're trying to prevent it from being agitated because they agitate it just as much. But I'm thinking that I got a deep, a deep one of these, 25 ounces. That means it'll hold. Yeah, it's 25 ounces, so that means it'll hold uh, four cans of butane, which I only plan to do a two can run with it. I'm only gonna make like, you know, seven to 10 grams oil. So um, I'm gonna run uh, Nug. I'm just gonna do 40 grams, which two cans for 40 grams. If it was trim, I would use one can. Uh, it's just that I'm trying to, you know, I'm running my fucking main colas. I wanna make sure I'm getting everything. And two, um, it, my first can barely even makes it to the bottom of the tube. I have it packed in quite lightly in my big 710 tubes tube. And when it, it barely even gets to where it's gonna drip out, and then I spray the second can, and then it starts dripping. But anyhow, I'm gonna blast it all in here boil off the tain and then not even not even tilt it and let the oil run I'm gonna like keep it steady no agitation throw it in the chamber and see if it does muffin or not you know maybe it won't but the main thing here is I'm gonna try to see if I can get it to where it stops bubbling at you know 120 I get it did my opinion fully purged without it buttering up on me and uh, I'm sure it will I'm sure it'll butter up in some spots uh, it's just a thought that I had in my head and, you know, the one way I could go about it, like a lot of other people do, is just to uh, do it. Just try it. And if it works out, then I could say, yeah, this is how you do it. And I knew that all along or whatever, like everyone else tries to do. I rarely, rarely ever hear anybody say, I just found this out. I found this out just now or whatever. Like, you know, you're never watching. I hate to bring up coma. It's not like I'm hating on him. But you never, like, watch a coma video and have him go, yeah, I just learned how to do this. It's always, you know, I was an expert, I was born, and I knew this when I was born, and whatever. But I'm not just saying that because of him, I'm talking to everybody. Uh, sub, even me. I, I don't know what it is, I think it's just a um, pride thing, you know. But personally, uh, who cares? We're just going to dab some more honeycomb here. I've got, oh! Oh, Kim Dog. So, uh, I've got this one big nug of my Kim Dog left, and I'm saving it because I ordered. I mentioned this in my last Wake and Bake. I ordered um, a used original Vapor Brothers um, unit, and it came with the same whip that I bought, which I bought it for 45 bucks at Pike Place Market, um, the smoke shop down there called Pipes Palace. Uh, they rip you off, but anyhow, I bought it down there, and it's Vapor Brothers whip and wand set now they have the knockoff brand ones make these uh with the rubber thing but that comes off and you can put the trumpet style wand like the silver surfer that's not hands-free where's my dad dude oh right there cheers half my dad went down on the floor missed <coughs> Here it is. <coughs> I've got a little thing with dabs that I've dropped on the floor. And I'm just saving them in here. Uh, I've got two, four, six. Because I'm, I don't want to smoke them in case they got something on them. Or in case maybe they're a fucking noodle and they're not a dab. You know, you've seen my videos in the past with the fucking Pop Tart dab and shit. So. <coughs> um, what are we talking about here? Oh yeah, so the vaporizer. So I ordered it used for 100 bucks, and it came with a brand new um, one of these whips. And one of these whips is, you know, like I said, 45, 40 bucks. I could imagine it being more than 35 um, at the cheapest you can get it. 
but it, they come with the ceramic screens, which I have broken all three of them that came with this. I even bought more and broke all three of those, um, just cleaning them. But uh, I use the regular screen instead. The ceramic screen lets little particles through because <coughs> um, it's pretty much just a ceramic honeycomb. <coughs> but uh, the head that I prefer, the reason I'm using this head right now is because I have a generic one that isn't rounded on the tip of the nozzle like the like the um, the brand name Vapor Brothers ones are. And the actual first ever Vapor Brothers that came out is cheaper. It's the the hands-free one is 199 and the original one is 150. And the original one you can't use this on there. You go to put that on there and it's not ground. It isn't ground at all. It doesn't see how this is ground on there. I have that ground joint to slide that on. The original one isn't ground at all. It's more like the Silver Surfer where it's just a ball on the end. Um, and then once you know they got the ground joint ones, um, the ground joint ones, the one that I just ordered, um, I got it used like I mentioned, it's still um, rounded on the end. It's ground back here so you still can use this head and have it hands free. The thing about hands free um, is this air comes out and it's directed into one spot. When you use it hands-free after you take a hit and you look, you can tell the very dead center is darker and the outside, especially if it turn up really high, will be darker and the outside will be like, you know, brownish. Um, but if you have the uh, other head, which I can't find right now, but luckily my new set comes with one, uh, it goes and trumpets out like this, like a horn, and then doesn't, or flares or whatever you want to call it, and then doesn't have the ground part on it. So it's essentially like this. And then the screen back here. And what's cool about that is when you go to put it up there, it isn't just on there. You can actually rotate it around. If you guys have seen the Silver Surfer, that's probably the best one like that. The Hot Box is another one you can kind of rotate it. Archie sells the Hot Box anyway. It sells the Hot Box, the Extreme Q. It sells the Launch Box, which is totally different than the Hot Box. Um, he sells the fucking Percy's, Percy CI, whatever, the Omicron, um, everything. He's got it. He's a distributor for a whole bunch of different uh, vaporizers. But anyhow, um, anyhow, any fucking how, I don't know why I keep saying that shit. Uh, the new one I'm getting is bulbous and rounded on there. Um, it's not digital, like all the knockoffs I have have a digital temp reading, but uh, it's always just what that heating element is. It's not the temperature of the air as it leaves the unit. And plus, say it was the temperature of the air as it leaves the unit. When it leaves, say you, when you first pack, you know, load this thing up, the stuff is fluffy and it's all the way packed completely full, let's just say. You take one hit and the stuff compresses a little bit. So after you take two or three hits, it's half the bowl. So the air is cooler by the time it hits your herb as opposed to where it was when you first started smoking that bowl or vaping that well, sorry. So I'll always have to turn that shit up along the process anyways as my shit gets more compressed. Do you see I grabbed another Haritos? I originally thought it was messing up my stomach. I'm not going to get any details. People in the chat room know uh, what it was doing to me. But anyway, um, I haven't had one of these in like two weeks and I noticed those side effects wouldn't go away. Then I stopped making these Mondo uh, peanut butter and jelly sandwiches where I put peanut butter on both sides just so my gallon of Smuckers doesn't soak into my bread and I seriously like it runs out when I cut the sandwich in half I've got so much Smuckers strawberry preserves in there it's like running out so I'm starting to think because after I stopped eating that strawberry preserve everything went normal again so I'm starting to think it was the strawberry preserves um, a combination of this being green and coming from Mexico had me thinking it had to do with making me sick or whatever, but... It didn't make me physically sick, like I wasn't uncomfortable or anything. It's just, it did something to me that freaked me out. That I don't think we need to talk about, it's kind of fucking gross, but... Anyhow, yeah. Um, so I got some honeycomb left. I was going to make some honeycomb yesterday until I noticed I only had three cans of tain left. And I usually do a four can run. And off that four cans I get about, um, let's see, at least a half ounce every time. But I've gotten up to 19 grams because I'm running 80. 
and 19 grams off of 80, if you get 20 grams off of 80, that's a 25% return, and that's fucking insane. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, especially when you know you look at my other videos where I'm running snow cap and stuff, and I'm talking about shit like, yeah man, I just ran a QP and I got fucking a half ounce. Yeah man, and I'm thinking that's all. Well, I wasn't thinking it was good, but I mean, it's just that's good for snow cap. That's as good as you're gonna get, especially you know. It seems like the bigger the snowcat plant, the less it wants to yield. I'm hoping when I grow these small ones here again, it's going to be like my, you know, my first snowcaps I ever grew, where I was getting those 18% returns and shit. And my snowcap outdoor plant, I was getting that high returns, but I don't know. My process has gotten way more refined since I was did, since I did that outdoor grow. Here's a boulder. Ready? Cheers. <coughs> that was some flavor right there, man. <coughs> I got enough time to get some flowers, so might as well do it. The Dutch treat, it was okay. Um, I'm going to save that one more hit. I grabbed the lemon skunk. Boy, is this like super lemon haze. Even the, the calyx look. The size of the calyx is. <coughs> I've had lemon skunk before. Uh, greenhouse grow though. This is the first like top shelf indoor lemon skunk I've ever got. <coughs> oh, guys, don't get me wrong when I say top shelf indoor. Not saying indoor like it's better. Uh, there's definitely some people who pretty much their greenhouse. I've not seen like any straight outdoor relying on the fucking environment outside. You know, showing up some indoor. But there's been some greenhouse that's been pretty damn good. There's been some greenhouse that's tested. Uh, that there's a, some blue diesel that we had out of Herbal Healing tested at 24% THC. Holy shit! <coughs> that was greenhouse. But no, this greenhouse had supplemental lighting for veg. It had um, it had big ass dehumidifiers, industrial dehumidifiers in there. It wasn't just a little hoop house that someone chucked their plants over. White fire. It actually does have that outdoor look to it as well. Uh, not so much in like the leaf to calyx ratio, but I'm more talking about the. Um, light color that you get like the sun wants to do it's weird <coughs> some stuff will be like army green when it's outdoor and then other outdoor will just have this really really light color to it that might just have something to do with the way it was dried or in the strain who knows but i don't dude i gotta hurry to get this hit down kind of stalling because my uh <coughs> My lungs here. Wanted you to get a wake and bake in with you. Yeah, as I'm breaking it up, I'm getting that super lemon haze um, smell and shit. Oh, I don't know how many of uh, my subscribers made it over here yet, but I know there was quite a few that would like comment on like my curve. Like seeing my fingerboard company, there's fingerboard companies and they see the stickers on there and be like, oh dude, you fingerboard. Even one dude um, on my Brett One Maverick channel, my comment feed wasn't in the feed. Like on this channel, if I comment on someone's video, you'll see it in my feed. <coughs> <coughs> my other channel, it wasn't. And he just happened to be watching the old fingerboard video that I had commented on. And he's like, whoa, Brett Maverick, you fingerboard? That's cool. <coughs> anyhow, what that was about with my fucking anyhow <coughs> is I got my third pro set up. Now, this is four years that I've been using pro setups. My first one was a D3 complete. Second one was a Pro Wood with uh, 
flat face G6s. Here I got this Berlin Wood flat face edition with Black River trucks and Winkler wheels. See you guys.